Guys, plain and simple, these are 10 technologies that you must know if you want to be a data scientist. Now, number one is probably not going to surprise you. The first thing is absolutely Python and its libraries. And this could take a while if you haven't learned Python or even any programming language before. This is going to take a while and be patient. Try to have fun with it. Build whatever you want in whatever way that you want to do it. But if you want to be a data scientist, there are particular libraries that you want to learn as well that are in Python, like NumPy, Pandas, Spark, Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, PyTorch to name a few. There's many more, including data visualization. But guys, learn Python and its libraries, however you want. Now, number two is a little bit misleading. SQL is extremely important to learn. However, it's not about the syntax. A lot of people, especially people on LinkedIn, get really into the syntax on SQL. And that's not the point. The point is that the world is full of relational databases. And so really what people mean when they say learn SQL is learn the syntax so you can do stuff with relational databases and you can understand how these things work, what tables are, what the relationships are between them, columns and rows, different ways of organizing this data. There's a lot to do with relational databases and wherever you go in programming, if you continue with data science, absolutely it's important. But if you go anywhere else as well, relational databases and SQL is just gonna follow you everywhere you go. So make sure that you learn it. Now, number three is a very particular technology, but it is one that comes up a lot. And for me and many, many other data scientists pretty much every day, which is Jupyter Notebooks. And if you know what these are, and it's brutal for me just to tell you that you should learn them. Well, actually, let me go a little bit further. It's actually a lot more than you might see. If you just load up a Jupyter notebook and you get started with it, that's great. But then once you get into it more, you're going to see, oh, I need a particular environment. So I'm going to need virtual environments and how to deal with packages in Python, Conda versus virtual environment. There's different libraries to deal with package managers. In each system that you use, if you go to something, maybe production versus on a local environment, or maybe Windows versus Linux, there's a lot of different setup there. And so it's not just about understanding that Jupyter Notebooks are a bunch of cells. It's actually the whole ecosystem of dealing with those things. So make sure you get comfortable with that in whatever ecosystem you're going to use. Now, number four is a staple in the software engineering community. Literally anyone that writes any code at all could greatly benefit from it. And so data science obviously included. That is Git and GitHub. It's a way of managing version control. For example, had a file called a.txt and then you push that to production. You need to update a.txt in the next version of production. Well, how do you manage the staging of going from the old one to the new one? It's that basically on steroids and there's a lot of different components to it. Now, I don't want you to memorize all of the Git stuff. It would be great if you go through a Git course and you do it once. Working on your own projects, you can use uh, GitHub's GUI tool, which is going to keep you signed in. You can just click and drag and drop things and click different files that you want to update. Perfectly fine for local development and even uh, production systems occasionally use it as well. So if you want to uh, really memorize the Git stuff, it's useful. It, it will be useful. And when you're deploying various things and just grabbing stuff, it's going to be great that you're comfortable with it. However, I see that a lot of people waste time with it because a lot of people are confused by it and don't really understand what it's doing, but you're forcing yourself to use it anyway. Honestly, GitHub's GUI tool is going to automate a lot of it for you and uh, it'll do just fine. Now, number five is cloud platforms, which is becoming essential in today's technology. If you don't know what the cloud is, basically, it's just computers elsewhere on the internet. It's not this amazing cloud. It's just that Google, Amazon, and Microsoft Microsoft have basically built these massive server farms that can handle uh, requests, they can handle compute, and so they're actually strong, good computers. And so why would you not store your stuff on their systems? And so all of these cloud systems, the software, is just a way of dealing with those. There's maybe Kubernetes clusters for uh, doing a bunch of compute storage. So you'll hear buckets, S3 buckets, or GCP, whatever buckets. That's just ways of storing data. So it's just storing it on a computer somewhere. There's a lot of cloud stuff. You'll get used to it once you start using it and doing various things. A lot of it is part of a different tool, which I'm going to say later. And what's really great about the cloud is they often have free tiers. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that you can do if you're just trying to build projects without spending any money at all. You can learn all these technologies and build the proper application. But because you're not actually scaling it to the level that Google, Amazon or Microsoft is actually going to care, they're just going to let you do it for free. So that's great. Number six is big data technologies. And this often refers just to Spark, which is Apache Spark, although there is many other big data technologies as well. In fact, even the machine machine learning and deep learning stuff, you'll start to see that there's ways, uh, more complicated ways of dealing with uh, massive amounts of data, often in parallel. But for now, basically, I just want to share that you would use something like Spark when you can't fit the data on one computer, or if you can, you really don't want to. And I don't just mean the storage of that computer.
computer, I mean the RAM, because basically we store all the stuff that you actually want to do in a computer and compute upon it, you would put that in RAM first, and then it would go to the CPU and GPU from there. If your data can't fit in the computer or that computer's RAM, then often you would spread it across multiple computers. And so Spark or PySpark is just a software library trying to abstract a lot of the things that you would do if it were on one computer. But given that it actually is spread out on multiple computers, then it's a way of abstracting that operation. And since it's abstracting it, you're not going to see too much of a difference. However, there will be some nitty gritty things where it's important to understand uh, what different functions are doing, given that it's spread out in parallel. So learn Spark at first, and then whatever job requires something else, then you can probably jump to that as well. Now, number seven is something I pushed off for way too long. And it's something that I just avoided. I saw it in the culture and I was like, maybe I should learn this, but I really don't want to because it's more for software engineers or more for DevOps engineers or whatever I didn't really want to call myself at the time. And uh, that thing is Docker. It will come up as a data scientist. You could technically avoid it all over the place and your life will just be more complicated. Or you could learn it. Your life will be less complicated. And in a company, you are tremendously more valuable because I can almost guarantee that they are using it because basically when you go to deploy systems, you have really no other options. You basically just have to. A lot of the stuff online, they are Docker images and you're not going to be able to get around that. So whether you like it or not, you should learn it. And so if you want to learn a few commands, just learn how to pull stuff, how to build something with a Docker file and understand the difference between an image and a container. And once you've got that, maybe you just spent a few hours on that and you roughly have the ideas. That's honestly good for now. Try to do that. Number eight is kind of funny because it's on my list, although I really don't know it very well. Let's be honest. I've used it a couple times and I see why people like it. I see why it's useful in companies. It is called Tableau. It's a great visualization tool set. Maybe you've used it. It's for drag and drop. You can do some coding stuff with it as well to make really cool looking visualizations. I've seen many YouTube videos and LinkedIn of stuff that's clearly using Tableau. And I really like the stuff that it can do with hopefully not that much effort. Tableau is not necessary. Let's be honest. If you were to go into a company they're probably not going to particularly require that you use Tableau. It is an option of choice amongst visualization folks. If you want to create something cool, maybe for a business meeting or whatever, that could be very useful. However, it's not going to really perform core functionality for the most part. That's more left for the coding stuff. So make sure you also get very into the coding stuff if you're also going to learn Tableau, but it's an optional thing. Number nine is useful for many, many reasons, along with largely because it's closely associated with the cloud deployment stuff, it is Linux and bash scripting. And you don't have to be a master in it, but please be able to do LS and show the files, PWD to show your pathway and CD to go between different uh, directories. If you can't do that, then please just go learn that. If you're on Windows, WSL, and then start doing it. If you're already on some Linux based system, I mean, I'd be surprised if you didn't know how to do that. But guys, learn your terminal. If you're in Windows, don't memorize your terminal, but be able to use it a little bit if you have to. If you're using any Linux based system, oftentimes you're pretty much forced to use your terminal in the cloud and all this stuff. It's just the easiest way to do these complicated things like GCP, AWS and Azure all support the sort of visual interface. However, if you go into a lot of the tutorials and for different external services that are going to use them, a lot of the tutorials are going to be using it in Linux because it's just easier. The terminal is just an easier way to do all the complicated stuff that the visual stuff is doing. Get comfortable with it. Start to not hate it as much as you already do. It's going to make your life a lot better in every scenario. Now, number 10, I left as the thing that is not a technology. And there's a lot of it. There's still all the mathematics. There is still the communication techniques. There's problem solving techniques and just a lot of the mental mindset of how to get there and how to do your job every single day. Make sure that you read things. Make sure you stay up to date in the architectures and whatever you can. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day, guys, and bye bye.